Seton Hall at Baylor later tonight. Your officials, Ray Natilli, Roger Ayers, and Bert Smith. And we are underway inside Bramwich Coliseum in the dark unis. Villanova controls the opening tip. Leon, no day day aims in the starting lineup. Kansas State wants to go taller because Villanova is known and that for pick hope posting you up. As King, that is a great sign. Justin Moore hitting the first three-pointer. They have lived by the three and died by the three earlier this season. He struggled last game. One for 11. you got to get him going because him and Dixon have to be that force. Justin Moore, the grad student out of Tamatha High School, starts off the scoring here for Villanova. Here's Tyler Perry, number two in white. Top scorer for the Wildcats. Five on the shot clock. Kassan. They're going to have to force it up. Kaluma does and hits the touch. Yeah, that's a great take right there from Kaluma, but the spacing was a little off with the two bigs of K-State. There's a look at your Villanova Wildcats starting lineup. Same starting five, all ten games for Kyle Neptune. They're old, they're mature, they know how to play together. They have a lot of experience. And that's the first turnover of the game. A traveling violation on the Richmond transfer. 23 in black, Tyler Burton. And that's not something you see Villanova do a lot. They do a great job of taking care of the basketball. And now for the homestanding Wildcats wearing their home whites. David Gassan playing in front of his mom, Esther, for the first time in his collegiate career. And this is his first shot. Here's Moore trying a little bully ball. And it's blocked by Gasson. And that is what K-State is going to have to do all night. When the guards of K-State get posted up, they must send help because they have the size advantage on the offensive side. Cam Carter, five and white. It's been a revelation offensively for Jerome Tang in the early going. K-State coming off back-to-back -back overtime wins at home to improve to 6-2 and two on the year. Here's Burton off the mark on the three. And Arthur Kaluma has the rebound and brings it up himself. Now the step through. <laughs> set that we typically see on the next level. The motor, the energy, the game, the handle. He can do a very variety of things on the basketball court. Jamal Tang says he has first round NBA draft type of talent. Baseline J off the mark for Dixon. Here's Cart in the corner. Nothing but air. And Mark Armstrong looks to push. In transition, he traveled with it. Second turnover tonight for the Nova Cats. I have to watch myself. I can't just say Wildcats. <laughs> I have to distinguish between the two, Rich. There's Jerome Tang in his second season, the reigning Big 12 Coach of the Year, and Naismith National Coach of the Year after taking Kansas State to the Elite Eight last year. Yeah, he's done a tremendous job, and the one thing I've been most impressed with is how he called out the Kansas State fans and look at the response that he's gotten in this building. The student section is filled all the way to right behind the basket. They were here early. Yeah. They got here when we got here. <laughs> Here's Carter. So that is where Cam Carter has gotten so much better, not in the mid-range game, but his confidence overall. He is a much more confident basketball player this season than he was last year. And he's playing monster minutes for the Cats. Back-to-back -back games where he played 40-plus minutes. Inside, Dixon, and that is the strength of Villanova. That right there is a great pass by Bamba right there. Off the pick and roll, he realized there was no backside help, there was no tag. Easy layup. Eric Dixon making his 82nd consecutive start in a Villanova uniform. Now playing D against McNair. And he walled up nicely. Burton on the right side. Look at the big man putting it on the deck. Left hand no good. And the tip goes. Back-to-back -back buckets for Eric Dixon. Eric Dixon is a problem because he shoots the three so well. You have to respect it. But he can also put it on the ground when going against bigger defenders. Here's McNair. Quick touch off the window. Nice feed by Tyler Perry. And the big man, number 13 in white, Will McNair, as his first bucket. 
Wholesale substitutions for Kyle Neptune coming on the next whistle. Like this matchup right here. Bamba. Great athlete, but he turns it over. Three Villanova turnovers in the first five minutes. When we come back, we'll tell you why Kyle Neptune thinks it's better in the Bahamas. For that 2016 NCAA championship game. And you see, Villanova against the world, they're a top 10 team. But against Philly, I guess it's not always sunny in Philadelphia for the Villanova Wildcats. Well, in those three losses, Nova allowed teams to shoot 48 from three. And they only shot 24 from three. Sucks on the board for Kyle Neptune. Jordan Longino, one of the first ones in, and says Lance Ware, the Kentucky transfer. And right there, we see the game, the creativity off of the bounce that Kaluma has, the step back to bump him with his shoulder and to create the separation and get to the free throw line. He has a lot of creativity to his game. Kaluma off to a good start. Five points in the early going for number 24 in white. Fifth in the Big 12 so far in rebounds per game. Part of that exciting Creighton team that was just one free throw away from advancing to the Final Four a year ago. Now some full court pressure by the Cats after the free throw man. That was one thing that Kyle Neptune stressed and emphasized. Went over the one 2 2 press that Kansas State continuously does. Tomba, good shot fake. Three from the wing is good for zero and black. TJ Bamba. Another great sign. One for eight, last game from the field, and he's only averaging two and a half in the last two. TJ Bamba is another threat that this Villanova team has, and that's a good sign. How about those struggling Villanova Wildcats from beyond the arc? They're two for three in the early go. And shooting it well. Here's Tyler Perry. Leading scorer has no shots yet in this game. And Villanova picks it off in transition. Back to Bamba. Catch and release. Longino. Another three from Villanova. Well, they're taking the right shots. They're driving the basketball, getting in the gaps, forcing Kansas State to go into rotations and help and neck knocking it down. And another turnover by the Villanova or by the Kansas State Wildcats. That's their third. This is a great way to draw the defender. TJ Bamba takes one bounce. He doesn't take an extra one and gets rid of it right on time, on target. Good three by Longino. Three assists on five made Villanova field goals. And they have themselves a three-point lead in the first seven minutes of this Big East Big 12 battle from Manhattan, Kansas. I like this substitution that Jerome Tang did. Put Day Day Ames in the game. Playing with two bigs was not working for K-State because the spacing wasn't good. Curtain from the corner. The threes keep falling. And when Villanova shoots the ball like this, they are extremely hard to beat. You have to be there on the catch because sometimes they will hit like this and get on fire. Other times, they might go on a cold streak. The freshman, Day Day Ames, answers back to the three of his own. a nine-zip Villanova run. But right back at it is Longino. He's the first Villanova Wildcat with multiple threes, but four different players from Villanova have gone from beyond the arc. Now Cam Carter. Trying to make it a three-point shooting contest. Tyler Perry misses. Strong tries, in and out that time. And Kaluma clears. Ames 
spins, left hand, high off the glass, too strong. Villanova looking to snap a two-game losing streak. Ball out of bounds, 15 on the shot clock. It'll stay Villanova basketball, but Villanova with their largest lead of the night. It's early, though, but they're doing what you would expect them to do after losing two games. Dropping two games that you should not have dropped. They're coming out here refocused, re-energized, and looking like the Villanova team that won the battle for Atlantis. And on the other side, you saw the fact that Villanova's defense rises up in those wins and holds the opposition to a low three-point shooting percentage. Tyler Perry, second in the Big 12 in threes per game, is 0 for 1 from the field so far. So Villanova doing it on both ends of the floor in the first nine minutes of the first half. Uh, typically, Tyler Perry's not a guy that gets going until the second half, but in this level of game and in this type of contest, he has to get going. There he is, right on cue, but he misses. And Arthur Kaluma doing the, some Arthur Kaluma things. Yeah, you have to pay attention to where Kaluma is when the ball goes up, because if you do not put a body on him, he will get offensive rebound after rebound. He leads all scores with eight, but Kansas State down by four. Chance to make it a one possession ball game after that Kaluma rebound. And Perry turns it over. That's the fourth. Kansas State turnover tonight. Justin Moore checking in for Jordan Longino, not Longino now. away by the Wildcats defense on the Kansas State side. But Tyler Burton recovers, gets the block, and now they're going to count the basket. Let's take a look at this. Oh. Close. That's close. Tyler Burton might have got that one. He might have got it clean. They're going to count the basket, and they can review it on the next timeout. That's the key thing. They, count, they call it a bucket so that they can go review it at the next break. Because if you call it goaltending, you cannot reverse the call. Hart got bodied up and fouled by Tyler Perry. He's first. Jerome Tang pulls no punches when talking about the expectations for this Wildcat team that had to replace two stars in Marquise Noel and Keontae Johnson. Justin Moore off the mark. Another rebound by Kaluma. Tang wakes up every morning. His alarm goes off and plays one shining moment. King. <laughs> they want to get back to the NCAA tournament, and they want to win an NCAA championship. Five on the shot clock. A deep three. Perry off the mark. That's a good defensive possession right there by Villanova. Not allowing the ball to get to the paint, staying in front of their man, Chesting them up, not playing with their hands, and keeping everything outside of the paint. Good defensive possession. And Bombo almost turned it over. Dixon in the corner. Out to Burton, top of the key. Off the mark on the three. And it's saved. Out of bounds. Ray Natilli says it's going to be Kansas State basketball. And you see him. The fire from Jerome Tang. That is right here. Good hustle right there by Bomba. Didn't save it, but it's the small things that you want to see out of your team, especially after you lose two games 
as you shouldn't have lost to. Response is everything, and I think Kyle Neptune, up to this point, would be pleased with the way his team is responding. <laughs> Talked about Villanova's troubles from beyond the arc in their three losses. They only shot five for 22 in their win against North Carolina as well. They've already jacked up 10 three pointers tonight, but they've made five of them. And he's saying, It's my house and it's my first half. Uh, well, you talked about it in the open, how well he plays against Villanova. And right now, he is continuing. Doesn't matter the school, he is continuing that streak. Bamba can't answer, and all of a sudden there's a lid on the rim for Villanova. Perry gets it out. The one more picked off by Lance Ware. Nice look up ahead, Akeem Hart. Twelve minutes gone by. King McCoy, Rich Hollenberg inside a sold out. Bramlage Coliseum, the continuation of the Big East Big 12 battle. And this is as close as we expected it to be, partner. Uh, both teams playing extremely well. And we're seeing high-level basketball from two really good teams. Six in the state turn. Caitlin Clark, 22 points away from 3,000. And King McClure, she's on pace to pass Kelsey Plum's D1 scoring mark of 3,527 points by the end of February. Goodness gracious. 3,000 points in a college career is insane. The girl is must-see TV. Yeah. First in the nation in scoring, second in the nation in assists. That's what's most impressive. She gets buckets but can also drop dimes yeah. better than almost anybody in America. All right. I think Trey Young from Oklahoma just a few Ooh, years that's, ago. That's a good one. I know that name too well. <laughs> I saw that up close and personal twice. Here's the freshman Ames. Ten on the shot clock. A little uncertainty from this Kansas State offense. Ames going to have to shoot it. He does. It's too strong, and the rebound to Hart. Rich, we're seeing the confusion because K-State is not really used to playing two bigs on the court. It is shrinking the floor, and their spacing is off because Gasson is not a three-point threat, so they're sinking in, not Bill Gardner. Armstrong lost it. No call. Kansas State wanted the turnover. Three to shoot. Longina from close range. Doesn't touch the rim. Here comes Kansas State. A chance to regain the lead. And Roger Ayers right at midcourt to call that backcourt violation. Seven Kansas State turnovers. And take a look at this right here. When, when Gasson catches the ball, he's not a threat. Nobody is worried about guarding him. And look at the spacing. Two bigs on top of each other. Down low. Dede Ames has to force up a bad shot. No threat. No spacing. They're not filling the X's. They look discombobulated on the offensive side with the two big lineup. Now number 20 in white, Jarrell Colbert on the floor. Another big. Why is Jerome Tang want to go big? Well, the reason why he wants to go big is because Nova is known for posting up their guards. So you want to put more size to not allow mismatches down low in the post. Villanova now 0 for their last 6 from 3-point range. Make it 0 for their last 7. They started the game 5 for 6 from beyond. Here's Perry. Quick release. First back of the game for the leading scorer for Kansas State. Tyler Perry has three. Yeah, you would like to see him get going. Yes, he's a second half player, but in the first half in a high level battle like this, he must be that man for this Kansas State team. All 40. Another great undersized guard here in Manhattan, Kansas. More on that story in just a little bit. Dixon goes down. The foul's going to be on Colbert. No better feeling than when you, as a shooter, can get a wide open, uncontested look. This will get him going. And Tyler Perry is one of a long line of undersized guards to come through Manhattan, Kansas, just last year, an All American 
in Marquise Noel played before him, of course. You played against a couple of good ones, and uh, Nigel Pack was in there. Yeah, Pack was good. He had some really great guards. Slander for the loose ball. Burton comes away with it, and he's fouled. And even though he did not get the foul and not get the result he wanted, I love what T.J. Bamba did right there. Put his head down and drove to the rim. I think at times Villanova can settle for the three way too much. Get to the rim. They're all good-sized guards, and they have a lot of advantages. They're good basketball players. They can get to the rim. Picked off by the big man, McNair. Fancy football. Typically don't see a big man that in transition can get a steal, hit you with the Euro, and have the ability to finish that. Good bucket by Will McNair. And now this crowd's beating them in transition right there off of the rebound. Cam Farr. Four of the most defenders were ahead of him somehow. He gets through the lane. Nice through and gets an easy two points. Kyle Neptune knows that's not acceptable. Largest lead of the game for Kansas State. We're back in 30. Stick with us. It ain't my dad's razor, dad. Hey, watch it. It's from Gillette Labs. This green bar releases trapped hairs from my face. Game changer. Well, the flex, this contours to it. So the five blades can get virtually every hair in one stroke for the ultimate Gillette shaving experience. The best a man can get is Gillette Labs. Here they come. All right, give it to me. Okay, I want a quarter pounder with cheese and no onions. Six-piece McNuggets. And extra pickles. And can I get uh, medium fries? Ooh, an Oreo McFlurry. Uh, look at this right here. K-State is getting off to a break right here. And Will McNair, the footwork as a big fella. And Cam Carter. Four Villanova defenders ahead. And somehow nobody picks up the basketball. Villanova is too old. They're too experienced to have those type of meltdowns somebody has to stop the basketball and I know Kyle Neptune in that huddle was getting on to those players Nova de desperate for a bucket one for their last 14 from the field down by six their largest deficit of the night here's Armstrong pull up Jay one for their last 15 now For Perry, short. Uh, I think Villanova needs to go back to the style that they're, com that they're comfortable with. The one-on-one -on -one ISO in the post. Take advantage of your mismatches. Don't try to force shots. Dixon, the big man, can't shoot it from three, but he missed there. And they've missed their last nine threes. The shot fakes this time. And no whistle. Good wall up by Gasson. There's Longino. Can't stop the drought. Offensive rebound, Burton. Longino again. Short again. And Villanova needs to get to the rim. The outside shot has not been falling in the last four or five minutes. They have to be able to find an answer inside the paint and stop settling for threes. Nice look, Paluma. And McNair kind of just threw that up there looking for a foul, and he got one. That's Tyler Burton's first, and it'll be Kansas State basketball when we return. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with King McClure's career, he played a number of games on this floor for the Baylor Bears back in the day and doesn't have a lot of good memories. It was a tough place to play for not only Baylor, but for every big team. I, I thought you were about to hype me up. With, uh, <laughs> listen. You took the opposite approach. <laughs> he doesn't have good memories. He lost a lot. You were a player back in the day. I just don't want to make myself feel old because I called your games when you were a player. 
Jalen and Sean coming up in two and a half minutes with the halftime report. Right now, a 14-2 Kansas State run. And Brandon Hawson cannot end that run. Well, right now, Villanova has taken 33 shots. 19 of their 33 shots have been threes. They are fourth in the country in three-point field goal attempt percentage at 50%, which means one out of every two of their shots they take are threes. Game high score with 14, his second triple of the night. He's played extremely well, and he hasn't tried to force anything. He's taken what the defense gives to him, and he's playing the right way. I mean, Coach Tate talks about how he's starting to buy in to that system of Kansas State Jerome Payne. Bamba draws the foul on Cam Carter, his first. Right here, in rhythm, not forcing anything, just taking what the defense gives to you and knock it down. And on the other side, T.J. Bamba doing what gets Villanova success. Isolation post-ups, that is what Villanova is known for. That is their bread and butter. They are so hard to stop when these physical strong guards get downhill and post up the smaller guards. T.J. Bamba at the line. First free throw of the game for Villanova. Well, tonight at 9 Eastern over on ESPN, the 29th annual Jimmy B Classic rolls on with the second game from MSG. Number 9, UNC. Number 5, UConn. A great night for a great cause. If you want to donate to the V Foundation, go to v.org slash donate. The Heels put up a hunch on Tennessee last week and talk about a tough non-conference schedule. Dan Hurley and the defending champ, UConn Huskies, their second straight top 10 matchup. Now Dan Hurley does no smoke in the non-conference. And going up against uh, a tough Carolina team after a heartbreaking loss to Kansas, in which they honestly had chances to win. They could have yeah. won that ball game shorthanded. McNair. Air ball from close range. And after the two free throws, Villanova trying to put a little spurt together in the final 90 plus seconds. Well, right here, TJ Bamba is being guarded by Tyler Perry. Don't be surprised if we see TJ Bamba on the block trying to post up. It's Longino. Finds Dixon. And Dixon draws the foul. And Jerome Tang wants a flop. Foul's going to go on Will McNair, and the big man, Eric Dixon's going to go to the line and shoot three. Well, uh, this is a good sign for Eric Dixon because uh, he is the catalyst when it comes to offense. He's the guy they have to get going, him and Justin Moore. And, uh, yeah, hit him with the body at the very last second. You have to let the shooter land clean. And what better way to get your best scorer going by getting to the free throw line? If you're the defense, you cannot allow a guy of his caliber, a guy as talented as him, three easy looks because now we can spark him and get him going from deep. And King, another piece of evidence as to why Villanova should try and get the ball in the paint. Yes. They are one of the best free throw shooting teams in the nation, second in free throw percentage after last year and the year before, leading the nation in that category. And as good as Eric Dixon is shooting the ball from deep, down low, he is a mismatch problem, and not too many people can guard him one-on-one -on -one because he's so fundamental and gets to where he wants, and he's also extremely patient. Doesn't try to force anything or be sped up. He plays at his own pace in the post. Dixon goes two for three from the line to cut the Kansas State lead to five with one minute to go in the first half. Sellout crowd, Bramlage Coliseum, Big East, Big 12 battle. Kaluma. Now it's Carter. Out to Gasson. Thought about the three, instead goes inside. Patience. And it's not a virtue that time. Right there, Ware did an amazing job of realizing who he was closing out to. Was going to close out hard because he thought he was about to give up a wide open three. Realized it was Gasson stopped short. He got the stop. Good possession right there on defense by Villanova. Eight second differential between the shot clock and the game clock. Villanova has not scored a field goal in their last eight plus minutes of this half. 
and they can't get one there. Five seconds to go. Villanova almost stole it away. Here's Kaluma with two seconds. That right there was great awareness by Cam Carter. Look where he throws the ball. Doesn't throw it to Kaluma, but throws it to where he is going to lead him with an easy path to get this and one. And Kaluma going opposite side. Had he went same side layup, he might have got it blocked or had a better chance of missing it. Goes opposite side to throw the defense off and get to the free throw line. Arthur Kaluma averaging 17 a game in his last six. Has 17 in this first half to lead Kansas State to their largest lead of the half. 33-25. The Wildcats in white leading the Wildcats in black. It's Kansas State with an eight-point lead over Villanova. We're at the half in Manhattan. Now we send it to the studio. Down and up, Sean Carter. Take it away. Thanks, Rich. All right, let's get you some highlights down at Basker Garden right now. Uh, we'll get them in a second. But the way it was created is the way Villanova gets back into the ball game. It has been a struggle despite seven lead changes. Villanova 0 for their last 16. They didn't score in the final eight minutes and nine seconds from the field. Kansas State led by Arthur Kaluma, 17 and 8 in the first half. They also dominated in the paint, 16 to 6. And in fast break points, 14 to 2. And right on cue, Mr. Second Half, Tyler Perry. Uh, this is typically where he gets going. I mean, he averages double figures in the second half, only about three or four in the first half. Right there, he looks to be more aggressive starting now. The largest lead of the game for Kansas State. Ron Gino makes it over their last 17 for Nova. Kansas State looking for their 16th consecutive home win against a non-conference opponent. Kaluma felt it in the first half, off the mark with his first shot of the second. That might have been the first forced shot that we've seen Kaluma take tonight. In the corner, Burton. Yes, a much needed bucket ends an eight plus minute drought from the field for Villanova. But the way that was created was by Bamba getting to the paint, finding the open man, forcing Kansas State to rotate, and they got a good look. And despite all their offensive struggles, King, they're down just seven. Perry drew two defenders. Ten on the shot clock. The big man, McNair. Two feet in the paint. Patient, and it doesn't pay off. Right there, in situations like that, when McNair has a smaller defender in Burton, McNair has to make the defense punish. Armstrong, offensive foul. <laughs> Let's take a look at Haley's Comet, a Villanova offensive bucket. Look at it. Cam Carter got lost on the defensive side. T.J. Bamba put his head down, got to the middle of the paint. He's doing a great job of being able to find the open man, really showing that he can play that point guard position. Oh. You know, Coach Haynes does an amazing job at his play call, and right there, he woes you to sleep, then sends a backdoor cut or a backdoor screen and gets the wide open dunk. It's better in officiating for letting these two teams yeah, jam yeah, yeah, inside. Them be physical. They're letting them play right now. Eight points for Tyler Burton. He leads the Nova Wildcats. And Villanova having to try to come back against Kansas State without their second leading scorer and top assist man. Justin Miller left the game in the first half with a screen right knee as we see Will McNair with his first bucket in the second half. So they're definitely going to miss Justin Moore because he provides instant offense at all times outside of Dixon, but Longino is going to have to step up right now, and I, I think that young man is capable. Bamba for three. And he also is more than capable. Like Washington State averaged over 15 points per game. They have guys on this roster who can fill it up. He can do it close to the rim, and he can do it outside the arc as well. Cam 
Kevin Carter is playing the best basketball of his career and is strictly due to confidence. Turnover from Villanova. Here comes Paluma up the right side. And he throws it to the wrong team. Here's Armstrong taking it himself from the right side. And Mark Armstrong's got his first field goal of the night. Yeah, I don't know who Kaluma was throwing that one to. The ball must have just slipped out of his hands or something. There. Five to shoot for Kansas State. Tipped out of bounds. There's three and a half on the shot clock. And we have our first media timeout of the second stanza. Wildcats up seven. We talked about Kaluma scoring, but early on, he dropping dimes in Cam Carter. Features Victor Webanyama and the Spurs against Carl Anthony Towns and the Western Conference leading Timberwolves at 7.30 Eastern. Then it's Nikola Jokic and the Nuggets finishing up a three-game road trip in L.A. against Kawhi, Paul George, and the Clippers. Coverage starts with NBA Countdown at 7 Eastern on ESPN and the app. Villanova turning out a bunch of great pros in the NBA. Colin Gillespie playing for the defending champ, Denver Nuggets. With time running out, Tyler Perry can't get that one to go, and it'll be Villanova basketball. You know Jerome Tang fairly well from your time and his time in Waco, Texas. A great man, great coach, and he's turned this Kansas State program into a national contender. And Bruce Weber did that too. But it just looks a little different with Jerome Tang. He boosts up as a tough team. For Barry Brown, Dean Wade, and our Stokes. Those guys were excellent. Here's Hassan. Force three with time running down, and it was guarded as well. Seven point Kansas State lead. Looking for their second win against the Big East team this year. They took down Providence in overtime earlier. Perry lined up a three with five on the shot clock. He's off the mark. Right there. Gasson sealing hard against the smaller guard and House and guarding them down low. You have to be able to recognize the mismatches on the court at all times. to shoot. Hart does and knocks down a triple. That was definitely needed right there. Just the seventh three of the season for the big man Akeem Hart. Grad student transfer from Maryland. Carter. No look pass off the hands of McNair. That is the ninth Kansas State turnover. Well, right there, Cam Carter had the wide open pass, but he threw it straight. And this is a good inside out roll and replace. Good look by Hakeem Hart, a guy who can also score and played well at Maryland. In the last two games, he's averaged 10. He's a guy that can give him, that can give this team a little bit more depth and a little bit more scoring when they need it the most. Nova down, but not out. All of a sudden, it's a one-point game. They're six for their last seven from the field. I'm a huge fan of Jordan Longino. I think he has a great future and a lot of potential. And I think with Justin Moore out right now, we'll see a little bit of it. Longino has three threes, nine points for number 15. Now look at this right here. The stop and pop. You go under, he rises up top. Jordan Longino knocking it down. Kaluma. Tying a season high. Kaluma with one. Right there, Kaluma doesn't really have the fastest release. So in order for him to be able to get his feet set and knock it down, you have to be trailing a, uh, by a long distance. So you have to stay on his hip and be aware. Bamba. He's in double digits with 10. Oh, 
Both of these teams no stranger to close games. The last two wins for Jerome Tang's Kansas State Wildcats in overtime. And that foul is going to go on T.J. Bamba, his third. You know what was interesting about talking to Jerome Tang? I kind of brought that up. You, know, you played Northern Alabama, you played Oral Roberts, both games in overtime. Like, are you pleased with the way you guys played? Because those are typically games you're supposed to win by 30, 40. And his response was, what do we, what do we learn from winning by 30 or 40 points? But he said, what can we learn from a close overtime game? I was like, you probably learn a lot more in the overtime game. <laughs> and he was like, that's my point exactly. So, yes, I'm glad that we won. Doesn't matter the fashion of how we did. Ames turns it over. Here's Nova in transition. Nice bucket by Mark Armstrong, and we are tied at 45. Ooh. Score. Might have gotten away with a travel on the catch, but nonetheless, that is a tough move. Slow step to scoop it in with the inside hand. Longino left alone. And Kassan clears. And that foul's going to go on Lance Ware as his set. That's just not a very smart foul. There is no reason in a game this close to foul about 86 feet away from the basketball. Look at this. It's just not a smart foul. Go get back. No need for this play. This is a bad, a bad play right there by Lance Ware. And the coaches are talking to him right now, trying to help him to realize you have to be smarter than that in close games where every possession matters. Well, you talked about close games. You mentioned those two overtimes. If you learn more in overtime games, then Jerome Tang is in Mensa because he is 8-0 and in his career with Kansas State in overtime. 3-0 this year. David Kassan, welcome to the party. by the Kansas State defense. R.J. Jones, number eight in white, making his presence felt. Well, King Esther Gasson, David's mom, in the house for the first time watching her son play college ball. And two stops in college basketball. But Esther Gasson has finally had the opportunity to watch her son David play college basketball. He spent a few years at Virginia Tech, transferred last year to Manhattan, Kansas to play for Jerome Tang and the Kansas State Wildcats. And Esther has made her way to Manhattan in her first game, watching her son play college hoops. David Kassan had a highlight alley you've done, King. Man, what a feeling to be able to play in front of somebody you love so much for the first time in college. And I know his energy is through the roof right now. And I know he's juiced. Seventh in the Big 12 in rebounds is David Gasson, but he had that big alley-oop dunk before we went to timeout here in the second half. Nice take by Cam Carter, who's starting to feel it. Good out-of-timeout play by Jerome Tang. Getting Cam Carter going downhill to his right side. His strong hand where he's best at. Oh! Strong! Medical rim by the rim. Kansas State looking to build on a 6-0 run after Villanova tied the game at 45. That right there is great patience by the freshman. Off the ball screen, play a great pace. See where the big is going. Kiss it off the glass. Good play off the pick and roll by Dede Ames. Dixon knocks down the two. That's what he does. With Justin Moore out, Eric Dixon has to get going and insert his dominance. Somebody find a point for extinguisher. He's got 14 on the game and 10 in the second half. I'm talk about a guy who is extremely confident right now. You can just tell. The more the year goes on, the 
bigger, the greater his confidence grows. This is going to go on Cam Carter, his, his second. And speaking of two, I, I shortchanged Cam Carter, too. He's got 16 on the night. Just look at this right here. Last year, he wasn't hitting these type of shots or making these type of plays. He was playing behind Marquise Noel, Keontae Johnson. But this guy right here took the biggest leap on this Kansas State team during the offseason, put in the work, and now he's reaping the benefits. Transfer from Mississippi State by uh, Oak Hill Academy. Gino gets his own miss and puts it back. 11 for Jordan Longino. That's the length and the size of Longino. You're seeing it on display. Getting downhill, going by the defender, following it up his own miss. Carter. I wasn't sure if that was a lob to no one or a missed shot. I don't really know if that's in his bag yet, but... It's a good try. And now it'll be free throws for the Villanova Wildcats, who are as good as anybody in the country from the charity strike. Tyler Burton going there for the first time tonight. And he's got the first. Well, tonight at 9 Eastern on ESPN, the 29th annual Jimmy V Classic continues from Madison Square Garden, number nine UNC, number five UConn. To donate to the V Foundation, go to v.org slash donate. It's the second straight top ten matchup for the defending national champion, UConn Huskies. Burton goes two for two. Villanova trails by just five coming up on nine minutes to go. Just their second true road game and the first time in a really hostile environment this season for Kyle Neptune and company. Yeah, because when you look at the majority of their games, especially the Battle for Atlantis, neutral court games, neutral site games, it's a major difference. Kaluma turns it over. That's turnover number 11 for Kansas State. Possession right there by Kansas State, not allowing any Villanova player to get into the driving lanes. K State, nice leave off, and McNair traveled with good feed yeah. from Kaluma to McNair, but it's the 12th Kansas State turnover. Right there, if you're McNair, he kind of got ahead of himself, was thinking about his next move before he actually had possession and established his feet. So now it's Villanova basketball down just five, eight minutes to go. Here's the double team. Hart puts it on the deck. Gets it back. A fresh 20 for Villanova. And they turned it over. Kaluma in the open floor. Oh. The step finish right there by Arthur Kaluma. Bomba, no. Here comes Kansas State again. Kaluma, a game high 24 for number 24. There he is with the ball. Perry, catch and release. He has not found the range tonight. 
But right there, if you're a Villanova defender, you cannot lose sight of him. Can't get caught ball watching to where Tyler Perry slips away from you. Too good of a shooter. Perry just one for eight from beyond the arc, but his team leads by seven. Seven on the shot clock. Bamba got fouled. With patience right there. The bomb, but it gets fouled off the pick and roll. Arthur Kaluma skipping through the lane, making it look easy. Nine for 11, extremely efficient, and he hasn't really forced anything. I've only seen him force really one shot. Everything else has been easy. Taking what the defense gives him, not trying to do too much. This is a young man who is fully bought in to Jerome Tang and, and their staff. And that's one thing that when we talked to Jerome Tang, talked to some of the assistants, they said they had to make sure that this young man was bought in. There would be times this season where he just wasn't, to frankly put it. But now he's turning that corner and he has the potential to transform this whole team and take it to another level with the way he's playing today and moving forward. Bamba hits the first of two free throws. He has 11. And now the Kansas State lead is just two possessions, 58-52. And you talk about a guy who has the potential to take a team to another level. I think Bamba also has that for Villanova. I mean, the kid has game. When you watch his film last year at Washington State, he got buckets at a high rate and is a really, really extreme talent. Now some pressure from Kyle Neptune's defense. Big 12 leads this Big East Big 12 battle. 4-3 coming into tonight. If K-State holds on and Oklahoma holds on against Providence, it'll be a moot point in Seton Hall and Baylor, and then tomorrow night, Marquette and Texas. And Roger Ayers right on the spot with the call. That's going to go on Ames. That's his second. After the foul, Ames goes to the bench, and David Gasson takes his place. So once again, Jerome Tank choosing to go a little bit bigger than we're used to seeing. I think the bigger lineup has worked better for Kansas State. Why do you think that is, Ken? Because it throws Villanova's offense off because you cannot post up the smaller guards. Right when I ask you that, Will McNair comes up with a swap in the paint. Here's McNair on the other end. Working on the smaller Bomba. Left hand won't go. Loose ball corralled by Burke. McNair has to capitalize more. There's been about three or four possessions where he's had a smaller defender on him, and he has not been able to score down low. He has to be able to capitalize on those mismatches. And a nice shot fake for T.J. Bamba. Earns him two more trips to the free throw line. That's one thing that Villanova does a great job of. Whenever they drive and get to the paint, they play off of two feet. They never, ever try to play off one. They play off two feet, which allows you to do multiple things other than score. So here's Bamba. A dozen points tonight. A perfect four for four from the strike. And the broadcaster jinks. He misses the first one. Big 12 now on ESPN Plus, a must have for Big 12 basketball fans with over 275 exclusive basketball games, including 25 plus men's and women's conference games, plus early rounds of the Big 12 tournament. If you're a Big 12 fan, you got to have it. Sign up today at ESPN Plus.com slash Big 12. I don't know if you heard a word of what I just said, kid, <laughs> because this crowd is loud inside the Octagon of Doom. We talk about Arthur Kaluma working on a double-double. Tyler Burton 
under the radar. 10 points, 10 rebounds tonight. And that's what he does for this Villanova team. He, he does the little things. He's almost a glue guy. The way he crashes the glass as a 6'7", he's honestly a wing, but they play him at the four. The way he crashes the glass is a skill. With the shot clock winding down, Kassan took it himself and came up empty. Shot clock violation, and that's good news for Villanova. Defense, hopingly, that leads it to offense. Kyle Neptune talked to us about this. He said, regardless of what we do offensively, our defense can never waver. And there's been too many times that they have not made shots on the offensive side, and it affected their defense. That cannot happen. Those two cannot correlate. If you're not making shots, you have to be able to get stopped. Bamba, aggressive again. Good ball movement by Nova, and it pays off. A triple from Hakeem Hart. The end rhythm shots. Drive baseline to the drift. Two on one advantage basketball. Good shot right there by Villanova. And would you believe this? Villanova with a bucket regains the lead. Last time they led, it was 21 20 with eight minutes to go in the first half. Tantalizingly close. That one falls off to the left side. I think the biggest difference that what you're saying in the first half and the second half is Villanova is doing a better job of getting to the paint. So those same threes that they were shooting in the first half, they're at least getting a paint touch first and then kicking out. Now we are under four minutes to go, and it's a one-point ball game. One of these teams is going to be the Cardiac Cats after tonight. Five on the shot clock. Well, that was all set up by Tyler Perry and his patience on the ball. See you guys coming up following the conclusion of this game. 3.45 to go in the second half from a sold-out Bramlage Coliseum on the campus of Kansas State University. It's a whiteout here in the octagon of doom, and the crowd has been at full throat for their Kansas State Wildcats. But a 10-point lead has now been clipped to just three. Villanova has won the second half so far, King. They're playing extremely well in getting to the paint. I can't emphasize that enough, the paint touches that they're getting, but every single time they make a run, this Kansas State team is doing a good job of responding and answering and keeping their calm and their poise. Nice touch from McNair to complete the three-point play. And here comes Villanova down four. K-State dominating in transition and in the paint. And one and done for Villanova. That's a good look right there. It's a wide open mid-range pull up off of the ball screen. And Longino has shown this year that he can hit that. Here's Perry. Quiet tonight. Tyler Perry leading scorer for K-State. Just five points. Kaluma. Oh. Another shot. State does a great job of is rejecting ball screens and right there he rejected the ball screen which allowed him to angle the defender got right back in the continuous hero step King Drew skipping through the lane Columa's having a night nice feed from Eric Dixon to Akeem Hart who has 10 and the lead still just four for Kansas State Columa won off his career high 27 and one rebound away from a double-double. Burton daring Kassan to shoot it from beyond the arc. Instead, he gets it in the paint. And he can't convert. And here comes Nova, down four, 2.20 to go. Dixon thought about it, pulls the trigger, can't hit. That's a man's rebound by Jordan Longino. Using that body to the rim and a timeout called by Kyle Neptune. The way Kyle Neptune just sprinted to the ref with a timeout. Alongside King McCord, Rich Hollenberg on hand for what turns out to be a barn burner here in Bramlage Coliseum. Villanova has clawed their way back to get to within two with a minute 58 to go. Villanova no stranger 
to close games. They're one and two this year in games decided by five points or less. And we've already detailed how Kansas State have been the cardiac cats this year. Three and zero oh in overtime games. And two and zero oh this year in games decided by five or fewer. Ten on the shot clock. Ames to McNair. Off to the right. And Villanova can tie or take the lead on this possession. Right there, Ames got lucky. Jumped in the air. Never want to leave your feet as a guard. Combo almost threw it away. Instead, Burton picks it up. Offensive rebound to where? And a fresh 20 for Villanova. Counting down to one minute to go. Here's Longino surveying, spinning. And he got it to go somehow. We're tied at 63. Wow. The strength to finish that off. Two defenders right there. Longino's not worried about it. Tough, strong road against Kansas State. And Villanova has somehow, some way, found enough offense to get right back in this game with 50.2 to go. And right here, I would draw up something for Arthur Kaluma to be able to get downhill or Cam Carter going to his right side. Kaluma, game high 26, 24 in white. Instead, it's Carter, he's tripped, and a foul is going to be called. That's going to go on Lance Ware, his third. So the clock resets to 20, and Tyler Perry triggered the inbounds. Now has the ball at the top of the key. Perry. 10 on the shot clock. Got to get the ball to Columbia. A lot of dribbling from Tyler Perry, and it's taken away by Hart. Villanova with 17 seconds left and a chance to win it. This ball has to stay in T.J. Bamba's hand. Not only because he has been the best scorer in the second half, he's been also been the best facilitator. Five to go. Here's Bamba. He's running out of time. And it's short. We go to overtime. And would you believe it? Kansas State eight and zero in overtime games. That's an impressive record. I mean, right there, Jerome Tang. The way he is able to draw up call plays when it matters the most. I think that's a perfect example. Well, on one hand, you could say Jerome Tang's crew battle-tested, right? He told yeah, you and you it. conveyed it. He <laughs> said, we'd yeah. rather win in overtime than win by 40. Well, he's going to have his chance to make it 9-0 and in his head coaching career in overtime games. And if you're Bill and over, you have to be feeling good. I mean, you've been down majority of the game. But you clawed your way back to be able to get into overtime, not having Justin Moore, and not shooting the ball extremely well from three. You have to be feeling good if you're Kyle Neptune going into this overtime. And now Neptune's filling over Wildcats. Have the ball to start off this overtime session. Here's Burton. Double-double tonight. Off the mark. Got fouled. And Tyler Burton will go to the line. So Tyler Burton on the season, a 67% free throw shooter is two for two from the charity strike tonight. And Villanova has their first lead since the 8.09 mark of the first half. Tomorrow night on ESPN2, rivalry game between number four Iowa at Iowa State. The Caitlin Clark Show comes to Ames, Iowa. Check it out at 7 Eastern, 6 Central on ESPN2. Burton can't both free throws. Villanova up to 435 to go in the overtime session. I think one reason why we've seen Tyler Perry be extremely quiet is because of the length that Villanova is putting on him. I mean, right now, they're putting Hakeem Hart on him. And, and Hakeem Hart is 6'8", 6'8", guard. Bamba. 
Leaves it for where? Might have gotten away with the travel. And that's a Villanova turnover. Kansas State has done an extremely great job of when they double, they're sitting high hands. The reason why you double with high hands is because you cannot have an easy lane of vision to see what you're throwing the ball, which has caused Villanova problems in the double team in the post. Now some full court pressure applied by Villanova and Kyle Neptune. On the floor for the Wildcats. Kaluma will trigger the inbounds. The freshman Day Day Ames will bring it up. Joined by Perry, Carter, and Gassan. Villanova's got Hart, Longino, Burton, Ware, and Bamba on the floor. Perry for three. Air ball. Right there, he's shooting over a 6'11 big man. The length of Villanova, I think, is really getting the to Tyler Perry. Interesting to note that despite all the success they've had with their big lineup, Jerome Tang going small right now. Longino. Good hands by Perry, but he's whistled for the foul. Right there in the double. There's no need to swipe down if you're Tyler Perry. You had the backside helping Gasson. If Longino would have shot the ball, because Gasson would have made up for the height differential right there. No need to swipe down and give two free throws to Longino. Jordan Longino, 13 points tonight. First trip to the free throw line. Touches the front and back of the room before falling through. Villanova led by as many as six in the first half. They lead by three now with three and a half to go in overtime. Kansas State needs answers, and Cam Carter has been extremely quiet. I think Arthur Kaluma has to look to be aggressive. There's the five out offense from Jerome Tang. And the freshman, Day Day Ames, precocious for a youngster. Man, they're really, really high on this young man. They love his shiftiness, and you kind of see it right here. Stop on a dime, snatch between, look for the body of the defender right there. He was underneath the basket, really had nowhere to go, but he sought out the contact, went through the defender's chest, and he gets the foul. He was a Jordan Brand All-American at Kenwood Academy in Chicago. And now he's doing it on a big stage. First free throw goes for Day Day Ames. The left hander gets them both. And it's a one point Villanova lead with the basketball. And now Burt Smith explaining things to Kyle Neptune right in front of us. Nikon Neptune tried to make a substitution at the very last minute. And Jerome Tang looks over there and says, you can't do that. And Burt, the referee, was like, you're right, Jerome Tang. You cannot do that. So he sent Bamba down to the end of the bench. Coming up on three minutes to go in this OT. Here's Longino. Shifty move. Got the foul. We'll go to the line and shoot a pair. That's going to go on David Gassan. That is the Villanova brand of basketball right there. Being able to post up, and Longino is probably the best post-up guard on this Villanova team. He takes his time, and he is extremely patient. He is posting up the, the center of Kansas State. He's posting up the big man, and he's about four or five inches undersized, but he doesn't matter. He gets angles, finishes, gets fouled. He's a good player. He's going to be great. And there was only a couple of free throws from both teams in the first half. Now we're seeing the both teams going to the line a little bit more. Advantage Villanova. Yeah. Because they shoot the free throws so well. I mean, second best in the country. One of the best in the country. Only Weaver State shoots it at a higher percentage clip. And the state, when a game is gone, to five extra minutes. Day Day Ames, the ball is in the hands of a freshman for Jerome Tang. They did that intentionally. They tried to deny Tyler Perry the ball, 
and give the ball to Day Day Ames because they trust Day Day Ames, trust Tyler Perry more than Day Day Ames, and a little too much on that line. That was a terrific play drawn up by Jerome Tang out of that timeout. Paluma to Carter couldn't convert. Villanova attacking the win again. Coming up empty, fresh 20. Now 10 on the shot clock. And they turned it over. K-State's got numbers, and it's blocked, no whistle. They're coming up on two minutes to go. Bamba falling away, no good. Here's Perry. Quiet night for him. What a shot face by Tyler Perry. And he's so good at that because he doesn't have the elevation when he gets into the lane. So what does he do? He perfects, takes his time, and typically it works about nine out of top ten times. Now the octagon of doom is the sixth man. For nine from three, he is the only Big 12 player in the top 10 in the conference in points and assists. And whatever happens in the final minute 36 in this game, you know number two in white's going to have something to say about it. I mean, you know how good he, he showed the world how good he was last year in the NIT. Actually, honestly, before that, but in the NIT was when it was really on display. When he led North Texas team to that NIT championship, and he's a talent. Gino inbound. Ten to shoot for Nova. Gino nowhere to go. Dixon for three. Yes! That right there is a big shot. They tried to double a little early because Longino had the height advantage on Perry. Well, they lost Dixon, and that's a wide open three. Now the Villanova lead is four, coming up on one minute to go in O2. Mismatch for Perry. But he can't take advantage. Ten to shoot. And it was off Carter's foot. Who wants it? 50-50 ball. K-State comes away with it. Nice look from Kalula and Gasson. Well, that right there is a smart play by Tyler Perry. This is a crucial possession of the game. 48 seconds to go. You do not have to foul. But what you must do, you must get a stop. So you have to buy in and you have to be connected. This is what you work for in practice. This moment right here where you have to get stops. And if you're Kyle Neptune for his band of Wildcats, what are they telling him? Well, you're up by two. You have to take the right shot. Do not turn the ball over, and if you take a bad shot, a bad shot in this possession of the game could be just like a turnover. You have to take the right shot. Here's Hart working on the smaller pair. 35 seconds left in overtime. Big East, Big 12 battle between a pair of Wildcat clubs looking for a dunk. Longino, no. McNair got a hand on it, and here comes Kansas State. Shot clock is off, 20 seconds to go. And Jerome Tang uses one ways. But right here, notice Coach Tang brings out Day Day Ames. They trust this freshman. They trust him to make the right read and to be able to get into the lane. And it looks like right now, off the way that they're going to draw it up, but it looks like he's going to be the one that starts with the ball in his hands. Kansas State 7 for 21 from three-point range tonight. They could win it with a three on this possession. So with Tyler Perry playing off ball, don't be surprised they try to get him the ball and set up something with him going downhill or getting to his three. Here's Perry. Six seconds to go. Uh -oh. Step back. Perry. timeout because they have one timeout left and they try to drop something on the sideline of the box. Here comes Longino. 